Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video we're starting Unit 3 of Part 5 of our Pre-Calculus series, Trigonometric Graphs. And in this section we're going to be focusing mostly on uh, the graph of sine and cosine. And the way that we're going to do it in this section is we're going to derive these graphs from the unit circle with the information that we've learned so far about real numbers around the unit circle, terminal points, and then the definitions of sine and cosine uh, that we learned in the last unit. But before we start graphing, it's useful to note that sine and cosine both repeat themselves in a very regular way, right? Remember, we had our definitions before of sine of t is equal to y and cosine of t is equal to x. And remember what this meant is if we have some real number t and we start here from our initial position and we travel around our unit circle a distance of t we end at a point pxy which is called our terminal point right this is where t terminates so for any real number t going around in the unit circle whatever our terminal point is it is the x coordinate of that point which we define to be cosine of our t and the y coordinate of that point which we define to be sine of our t so we can use this fact to kind of um, look at these graphs. Oh, but, but what I was saying before, um, the first thing we want to notice is how these two graphs repeat. Now we know that it takes 2 pi distance to travel once all the way around the unit circle with any value of t. But let's look at sine for a second. If sine is equal to y, and I travel around the unit circle, here my y started at 0, it's slowly increasing to 1, it goes back down to 0. Now here my y is going down to negative 1 at the bottom here, coming back up to 0. Now once I reach my initial point again, if I were to keep going, I'm just going to start repeating those values of y again, aren't I? My sine is going to do the exact same thing the second time around the circle that it did the first time around the circle. All of the values are the same at a distance of 2 pi away from each other, right? This isn't anything new. We've talked about this before, but it's a little bit new in this context. So what we call this what we call sine and cosine in this context, we call them periodic functions. And they both have a periodicity or a period of 2 pi. And what that means, here I'll show you what that means algebraically. Algebraically that means that sine of t plus 2 pi is equal to sine of t, isn't it? Right? If I take any t, let's say I take a t that gets me to right here, and I add 2 pi to that t, I'm just going to end up right here again, aren't I? And the y value, or in other words the sine, is going to be the same no matter what the argument is that's getting me to this same point. So I can always add 2 pi to the argument of a sine and get the same thing as if I just had that t. Now this is the same as when we looked at terminal points before, we know that we got the same terminal point at every increment of 2 pi. So because of our definitions, that's applying itself here. Now we can go even a little bit further, it's not just one increment of 2 pi, sine of t plus any increment of 2 pi, so I'm going to write that as 2 pi k is equal to sine of t. And that's where k, remember this notation, k is in, we have this double barred z, means the integers. So k is an integer or a whole number, right? So if I multiply 2 pi by any whole number, 0, 1, 2, negative 5, 17, any whole number at all, this is going to be the same as just sine of t. And the exact same thing applies to cosine, right? Cosine also has a period of 2 pi. So cosine of t plus 2k pi is going to be equal to cosine t as well. Now the reason that I'm talking about this before we start is um, it's standard when we're graphing these trigonometric functions that we really only concern ourselves with one period. It, we don't need to graph these functions forever and ever. We know that if we graph one period, then after that it's just going to keep repeating itself over and over and over again. So one period really gives us all of the information about the trigonometric graph that we need. Okay? So I'm just going to graph one period here of each of these functions. So one period, as I said, for both of these functions, one period is going to be 2 pi units of distance. All right. So let's start with sine. I'm going to start off with my sine here. I'll change my color here. Let's have my 
this is going to be sine of t. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call this f of t. So f of t is equal to sine t. And over on this graph that I've made here on the bottom, let's go ahead and note this. This is f of t. This vertical axis and this horizontal axis is going to be my t. Now in the next video I'm going to transition out of this. Um, this is just so that we can see the correspondence to the unit circle, uh, but we'll typically be using y for this vertical axis and x for this horizontal axis like we're used to. Um, like I said, I just want to connect it to what we've been doing so far. So sine of t, let's look at a couple of these key points and then we can kind of fill it in. At 0, 0, at this point here when t equals 0, sine, which is equal to y, also equals 0, doesn't it? So I know here at 0, when t is 0, f of t, which is my sine, is also 0. Okay, I know that up here at pi over 2, sine is equal to 1, t is equal to pi over 2, and here I've denoted, here's my pi, so this little line here, this is my pi over 2. So we have t is pi over 2, sine is 1. At pi, which is this point right over here on the left of my unit circle, right? I, that gives me t equals pi, sine's back down to zero, isn't it? So sine is gonna be right here on my graph on the bottom. At three pi over two, that's this other little line between pi and two pi. I'm all the way down at the bottom of my unit circle, so my sine is going to be equal to negative one. That's down here, oops, down here. And at t equals 2 pi, that's going to be back at my initial point again, so my sine is back to 0. So we have these dots. Let me see if I can fill this in with a good looking graph. All right, the sine graph comes up here, it comes back down, Ooh. hits that bottom one and comes right back up. Not too bad, a little shaky, but that's um, what the sine, the basic period of the sine curve looks like. Now if I wanted to extend this curve out to the left or to the right, I would just kind of repeat what this is. I could kind of take this block of 2 pi and t and think of it as being like a rubber stamp. You know, those rubber stamps that you, you stamp on the ink and then you stamp back out on the paper. I can make a rubber stamp of this and I can just stamp one just to the left of where I ended and then just keep stamping repeatedly. And I can just keep stamping it repeatedly on the right, right? It's going to repeat this exact same graph over and over again to the left and to the right. So this is not the entire graph. This is just one period. And as I said, um, we usually just focus on graphing one period of the graph to get all of our information from there. Okay, now let's take a look at cosine. Let's do cosine over here in some green. Let's say I have f of t is equal to cosine of t. Now cosine is going to be just a little bit different, right? Here at my initial point, at 0, 0, my cosine is equal to 1, isn't it? Remember, cosine is x. So at t equals 0, my cosine equals 1. It's up here. At t equals pi over 2, my x is equal to 0. So cosine is equal to 0 right here. At t equals pi, now I'm over on the left of my unit circle, cosine is equal to negative 1. At t equals 3 pi over 2, down at the bottom of my unit circle, cosine is equal to 0 again. And at t equals uh, 2 pi, cosine is back to positive 1. Now I'm going to go in the negative direction a little bit. Um, cosine, you can do it two different ways. You can make it kind of look like sine here, but typically uh, we'll be looking at a little bit different of a range for cosine. So that's why I have this little left section. I want to look at when cosine's negative pi over 2, or sorry, when t is negative pi over 2 over to the left here, that's the same as 3 pi over 2 down at the bottom of this unit circle. So I have a cosine equal to 0. And when t is equal to negative pi, my cosine is over on the left of the unit circle here at negative 1. So typically when we draw the basic cosine, it will look something like this. Starting from the left of the y-axis, kind of starts down, it comes and peaks up in the middle and it goes down at the bottom. And like I said, we could we could start it up here at the y-axis like we did with sine. It's just kind of nice when we have one period of cosine, one period of sine, we make them look a little bit different from each other here, and then we can differentiate between the two more easily. All right, so these are our basic graphs of sine and cosine. Now in the next section, we're gonna go a little bit beyond this, and we're going to um, start talking about transformations of these graphs, getting a little bit more complicated than the basic sine and cosine.